All right, welcome back to another episode of Trading Corner. Uh, bouncing off the lows here. We talked last week about positioning being extremely short. Mm -hmm. It got even extremely shorter somehow uh, between our last episode and right now. And I guess the big question is, can the bearish fundamentals sort of overwhelm what is... I think this is record spec short positioning in flat price mm -hmm. since the CFTC began collecting data. If you add up all of the different contracts, Brent TI, heating oil, our heating oil, gas oil, RBOB, um, the yeah. net length is below zero. So the community yeah. is net short for the first time. <clears throat> Pretty wild. Yeah. Can the market sell off? Well, I think again, we need to remember how dynamic the markets are. So. To have a bearish, you know, fundamental picture, which everyone's calling for three weeks ago versus now is drastically different. Um, so, yeah, we've had, you know, flat price sell off kind of bounce back up around $74. A lot of it, as we suggested, is probably down to positioning rather than a change in fundamentals. But I think it's probably time to kind of relook at all the benchmarks again, yeah. to be honest. Um, so, I, I mean, for me, starting in the East, to buy pricing, still pretty strong. Yep. The calls for OPEC, you know, what are they going to do into Q4? We pushed back the um, increase in production. So yeah, potentially into the next couple of months, we might see pricing soften, but we're just not there yet. Then we look at Europe, exactly the same picture. You know, we came from a summer ball play. We're still very much in that. Um, the forward curve is suggesting we sell off, but we still haven't come below a dollar on the dips. Right. And then it's TI. Now, TI is, um, has been incredibly strong in Cushing. So run rates are still particularly high. We're getting now the pull of Midland into Europe and into Dubai because both of those benchmarks are particularly strong. Freight rates are low. The ARBs are up. I mean, if you look at just the pricing contracts and where the differentials are, you wouldn't say we're in a particular, particularly bearish market. Agreed. Um, but you know, you have to look at the forward curve and the forward curve is still suggesting that we are going to sell off. You know, it's an interesting point you bring up about all these different regions. Maybe the trade isn't get short ice Brent mm -hmm. flat price. Maybe the trade is just play for all these old dips and regional um, premia to collapse towards Brent, right? So maybe Dubai comes off, maybe TI cools off a little bit. Yeah. Maybe some of these WAF dips and a few other things that we like to track, you know, the, the dated sort of physical Maybe all of that compresses yeah. a little bit lower. I think I, I totally agree with you. I think that's the thing. Like all eyes are definitely on flat price right now. I mean, I know we've been suggesting, um, you know, the short positioning, et cetera, but every kind of media outlet is saying the same now. It's very well televised that the market's short. Yeah. Um, so I, I mean, me particularly, I quite like to argue that when the market's talking about something so much, it probably won't happen. Mm. I know you're, you're thinking a little bit differently, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess we have a little bit of a debate about this on the, on the trading floor. It's sort mm. of like, okay, so if there's a bunch of information that's widely telegraphed, I agree with you, it's, it's probably already in the price. But positioning, yes, it's being talked about a lot, but even if it's widely telegraphed, I guess my slight difference from your opinion would be that, yes, it does matter because every sell-off is going to be sort of buffered by tremendous amounts of profit taking. Mm. It's like a synthetic bid to the market. So I do think that even though everybody knows the market's short, you can still get a massive face-ripping rally because yeah. once you see, you know, let's say you're a participant, you're short, it's coming in towards the end of the year, you're protecting some P&L, you start to lose it as the market starts to rally, you can get a cascade mm. of short covering. And it doesn't matter. Like everybody knows that everybody else is short and it's kind of this weird game theory prisoner's dilemma of like who gets out first yeah. and i'm not convinced the physical is going to bail out the derives players at this point yeah i mean it's a bit <laughs> tricky because you look at flat price where it is now and 74 dollars isn't particularly cheap i don't think but then you exactly have the argument that well the positioning is so short that really i mean in your opinion at least you think we should rally from the short covering potentially right i think we should just keep bouncing around in this range and it's frustrating right like you have this community of momentum traders who yeah. crushed it from 2020 to 2023 mm. on all this covid ukraine stuff mm. always and being long yeah always being long or yeah. during covid just trend is your friend it's yeah. going down be short and and now like we're just banging around in this tiny little range 
the momentum mindset is not working. You have mm -hmm. a lot of frustrated momentum traders out there. Realistically, the only thing that's worked this year in terms of like, like kind of crude, you know, broad crude prop trading is just selling options with reckless yeah. abandon. Yeah. Um, what's it going to take for the market to break out of this little range? I think it's going to take a lot now to get us back to 70, to yeah. be honest. Um, which is why I think there are so many other contracts that are just way more interesting here. I mean, Agreed. we are still going into a refinery turnaround. So there is going to be that lack of, you know, real refinery buying. We're seeing, I mean, a couple of uh, European refiners are already accustomed their run rates um, because of unfavorable refining economics. So I think we can con really continue to see that into Q4. So for me, I think it's all in the fiscal premiums. Now, how you actually express that? It's probably more structure. So for me, I mean, kind of the pricing into dated, I don't think it's going to, well, let's put it this way. I think there's more downside than there is upside. Yeah. But then saying that, already the forward curve has really come off a tremendous amount. I mean, you look now at kind of where um, October barrels or maybe early November barrels are pricing. I mean, the diffs have gone down to around 40 cents. Mm. So trade houses looking at that, we're currently pricing 120. They're looking at the forward curve is at 40 cents. They're probably going to buy into it. I mean, what is the risk to reward there? It's pretty good. Yeah. So. I think we are going to see this uptick on the forward curve, but into pricing is potentially where we might come off a little bit. Mm. Um, but then saying that, I mean, it's been working the last week or so to play play long still, and I don't think that's going to change into the next week, to be honest. Yeah, me neither. I mean, I guess the, t the big takeaway here is like, in terms of the big macro stuff, like flat price and options, Probably not a lot to do. Yeah. Keep, you know, stay. Don't, don't get complacent. Get watch hot. the market. It's, but yeah. these little niche tactical trades are where it's all at. Like I've found a few good ones in gas oil. Mm. Um, Sing ten ppm has been a very trendy market this year. It's been pretty predictable. Yeah. It's had some big swings without a lot of chop or ranginess. And yeah, I guess I guess maybe we have to look a little bit beyond the flat price and yeah. maybe the front few spreads. Like yeah, as you said, there are so, many, there are so many niche contracts. Um, to be honest, I don't think crude is going to be the interesting space in the next couple of weeks. I think it's going to be in products. Yeah. Um, we were saying the last couple of weeks, we we're thinking long product crack rolls. Maybe this looks more like product spreads now, um, especially the pressure that the refiners are having to cut these runs. There is still going to be a bit of crude, um, Product demand, sorry. So, yeah. you know, these cracks or the spreads at least should have a little bit more upside, especially if crude is helping to drag it up. Um, yeah, it's hard to see like flat price going up much. So, if the risk reward in flat price is like kind of neutral to maybe slightly bearish, then you probably have a good base to buy back end cracks. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I can't see anything, you know, particularly interesting happening in, in the crude space for now. Okay, let's um, zoom out then. What in the next one to two years? What, what's your just like finger in the air guess in terms of when we start really going again and, and crude flat price gets interesting? Is it going to be an energy transition thing like EVs? Mm. Big macro picture. When do you think we break out of this? Is going to be an OPEC I unwind? Think I think it will start with OPEC. To be honest, I think the market um, has held so much faith in OPEC supporting the markets by holding back production yeah. and you know using their OSPs to make sure that the oil is kind of flowing favorably in certain regions that if they do come out and flood the market I mean I think we can easily look at 20 25 dollars same because it's not just the fact that they're bringing out production it's it will be like the shattering of a body that you know, supports the whole benchmark. I think it. I think it will be quite a big deal. So that's like. I, I think it's fun to speculate about this. Obviously, we we have no idea. But no, at the same know. time, <laughs> like it's it's cool to think like what's going to take us out of this little range. And yeah. yeah and do uh, you think it might be unwinding OPEC? I mean, I I kind of agree. I mm. think like maybe this sort of malaise in China continues. Maybe EV sales there continue to outperform, and then maybe. You know, the Matterhorn uh, natural gas pipeline just got finished. That's going to bolster more Permian crude production. Maybe the U.S. shale engine finally breaks the back of OPEC and they just throw in the towel. Yeah. Well, I mean, we kind of saw a little bit of it during COVID, right? When yeah. 
they were ready to kind of get their gloves out. Um, yeah, in 2014, get... 15, 16. So we've been there before, and I mean, it didn't last particularly long, especially in COVID, but... It's party time for oil traders when they're doing that. <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> it can be. The... Um, but it just feels quite different this year. I mean, it feels yeah. like all year we felt fairly propped up. Like, yeah. everyone's kind of been waiting for that summer ball play, as we, as we said. It happened in some markets, it didn't happen in, in others, but we haven't had a re or like a convincing like pricing position or sorry the, the contracts pricing out like favorably at all it's kind of been like pockets over here and there you know people kind of nothing know, nothing use... crazy this summer was kind of a dud wasn't it it was like all right a couple of physical shops mortgaged the late summer tightness and did the play and whatever it was, it was just July. really hard to buy into it yeah. every time that you know the crude rallied or just product mesh. rallied it yeah. was just really difficult to be like yes okay this is where the market truly should be um which is obviously why the market is now calling for everything to kind of reset lower but yeah it's we're in a very strange kind of so we're basically hoping we're hoping that opec is you know they act all nice they act like a happy happy marriage but maybe they're just seething on the inside you know, we're kind of hoping they, they break up. Yeah, I mean, they've already pushed back these production increases once. Well, they, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, they could do it again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've done worse, right? But what, are they going to roll it into infinity? I don't, they have to come out at some point and say enough is enough. Like, we need some revenue back. And you know what's crazy? Um, Saudi break-evens are in the, I mean, obviously their break-evens at the wellhead are like $2 a barrel. Who cares <laughs> about that? They're, they're, like budgetary fiscal break even is north of eighty dollars, which is wild yeah. because they have to pay all those princes. Yeah, in um when was it? Twenty well pre COVID for sure, but it used to be as low as like forty dollars, right? Yeah. It's just it's hard it's easy to do new handouts and hard to unwind them. Yeah. And after the boom years, I think people are getting used to a certain way of life there. So yeah, I think there's gonna be some austerity mm. in in the future for some of these big kind of Gulf Petro states. I, I don't really see how this ends well because the demand picture is not looking explosive. All the major outlets are predicting peak demand by 2030. Take that with the enormous grain, grain of salt that you have to take it with. But like, even that aside, like the supply side just looks robust. Mm. There's not, there's no shortage of this yeah. stuff. Well, on that point, actually, um, <clears throat> freight could be quite an interesting contract to potentially yeah start getting long. I know it's sold off um, recently, but especially when regional crudes, so Europe um, is pricing quite strong, Asia is pricing quite strong, what it's going to incentivize really is a lot of lot more crude flow. Mm. Um, so people are going to start booking these ships into the, into the East or into Europe out of the US. But additional to that, if the market is thinking, well, we might start coming off, potentially move into Contango, you're going to need ships to store this oil. Yep. Um, so it could be that actually in the next, I don't know, six six or so months, we could see some really decent price action in freight. Yeah, that. I mean, some of that will be offset by lower interest rates, right? Like your storage economics are obviously more expensive when rates are high and yeah. less expensive when rates are low. But I agree. Well, do, do you actually think we could go into Contango? I think as long as OPEC is around doing their thing, mm. it's going to be tough. For us to sustain contango and get those freight rates yeah i think we 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 could and when we do i think we'll do it meaningfully um the big unwind you get when when the market sustains contango for i think it's a month or two consecutive months i forget which is all those big indices like gsci and bcom mm. they unwind right because the carry trade is gone yeah. so then you get big flat price selling and then i guess we could see the market get even more short yeah and to be honest if i was <laughs> going to call for it i would call for it to happen probably Late November, early December. And that's a time when participants aren't taking a lot of risk. Things get gappy. Well, also to that, um, usually what we get is a lot of, and I think we've actually, to be honest, we've had it the last couple of weeks. We get a lot of Chinese buying flow, kind of start of Q4. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of this is to wear down a lot of their quotas that they got, get from the government. And then we come into late November and, and December, they're typically done with their buying. Interesting. And so that's kind of usually where Europe will potentially take hold or maybe the markets will rebalance a little bit and you'll you naturally get a bit more sell side pressure right. around that time. Um, because I mean, I don't know if 
I, I mean, I've definitely heard indications of it um, the last couple of weeks. Right now, we've kind of got all the US trade houses on the sell side. They're still producing a lot. I mean, maybe this TI ball play is, is done now. So they're looking to book a lot of their cargoes into Europe and Asia. And we've had all the Chinese on the buy side. So it's very much a, as I said, a regional battle between right. the US selling and the and the Asians buying, and we're seeing that being booked on VLCCs as well. So once it, the East kind of step out of the way, which I expect will be towards the end of the year, then we could see a flush. Yeah, and that's also the time when in the US you get destocking for tax reasons, mm -hmm. emptying of the tanks, and if there's no Asian demand to yeah. ship it East with and into, then yeah, problems ahead. So maybe, maybe the... Uh, Consensus short trade will work for the people if who can, can hang on. Exactly. That's exactly what I was about to say. If you can hang on for long enough, I'm sure. I mean, as, as with anything. Um, what is that Gartman rule? If you can remain you can, solvent longer than you can remain sane or something. I think it was the market can remain irrational longer than yeah. you can remain solvent. There we go. But, uh, or sane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe the way to play it is keep positioning nimble wait for a big short covering rally, and then sell into it with both hands. Yeah, and I, d <clears throat> I think the opportunity for now is in product spreads. Agreed. Totally agree. Cool. All right. We'll catch up next great, week. Great talking to you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.